Hello everyone and welcome to today's golf short game tip entitled a pitch over a bunker. In today's video I'm going to show you how to increase your chances to do just what I did and to hit a really good solid consistent shot up there in a tough situation like pitching over this bunker give you your uh, best chance to get up and down. Let's get right to the action. Now I'm down here back uh, where I originally struck the golf ball and you can see this is a pretty intimidating shot to hit, and often we get this in golf. You know, if I was play, pretending I was playing a par three and my tee shot ended up here, shot one, I would really like to get a three on this hole, get this baby up on the green, and one putt, just like I did in the opening. Now, what happens in this shot is, is we get so focused on the trouble in front of us, that big, nasty bunker right in front of us, that, uh, like most amateur golfers out there, you struggle to get out of greenside bunkers. But we get so focused on this trouble in front of us that, that uh, we miss hit this shot. And uh, we end up hitting the ball into the bunker or we end up blading it and sending it way beyond the flag. But I'm gonna give you some uh, tips on to how to con more consistently get this ball up on the green where your next shot is with your putter and not uh, with your uh, uh, sand wedge or lob wedge. So. Let's get into uh, some steps on how to increase your chances to get the ball up and down from here in this short game tip. I'm gonna grab the camera, kinda go over this shot because the first thing you wanna do, step number one is just simply to relax. Okay, we need to acknowledge this bunker being here, but we're not gonna sit here and think about, oh my goodness, I'm gonna hit it in the bunker. We cannot have those thoughts in our head. We gotta stay positive. We're gonna have a plan that's gonna carry over this bunker and get on the green. And that's what we gotta focus on. We gotta uh, get a plan to where this bunker is not even there anymore in our minds. We're gonna focus on a landing spot. So step number one is to relax. Step number two is to visualize. So we need to take the camera, go up, and actually look at this shot and see where we wanna land this ball. So step two, you can see the ball laying right there, is we need to visualize this shot. We know we got to carry this bunker, so we got to hit a high lofted shot, and we need to concentrate on where we need to land this ball. You can see right here as I'm taking the camera up here, we need to at least fly it up uh, on the fringe and let the ball release to the hole. If not, uh, land it here uh, just a little bit on the green and let it release to the hole. We have uh, very little green to work with. This green is relatively fast. Uh, with that being said, we know that we cannot hit a short shot. Anything short, anything gets up here on this hill is gonna roll down into the bunker. We wanna, if anything, err on hitting the ball a little bit long. Even if we hit a little bit long and we end up on that back fringe behind this hole, that's okay, because our goal is to use our putter on the next shot. Now let's move on to step number three. Step number three is to take the proper club for this shot. In this shot, we need to fly the ball high to clear this bunker, let it land softly on the green and release to the hole. So I recommend in step number three, taking your highest lofted club in your bag. Now we're talking about your sand wedge, your lob wedge. Uh, more specifically, you know, maybe your 54, 56, 58 degree wedges, your 60, your 62, 64, whatever that is in your bag, you want to take a sand or a lob wedge in this situation because we want to land it, fly this high, land it soft and release to the green. For step number three, my selection would be my 60 degree wedge because it is the highest lofted club in my bag. So step number four is to take that club that we've selected out of step number three and we're gonna open up the club face and re-grip it or re-attach uh, our hold on the golf club. So I'm gonna demonstrate. If I were to set up square and have my normal uh, address position with this lob wedge, you can see it has a lot of loft. You can see by the magnet, it's pointing up in the air. And that's why I've selected this club. We gotta get the ball to fly high, land soft, and release to the green, just like I did in the shot for the opening. But we need to land it a little bit softer in this case and fly it a little higher. So what we're gonna do is take that club face and open it up or get it pointing to the right. And now, as we do that, look at that magnet. Look how it's pointing almost vertically up. We got to open up the club face because we got to land this even higher than what our uh, wedge is going to do. So I'm going to open up the club face and then I got to re-grip it because if I don't, then my grip gets all weird. 
So I open it up, and then now I put my hands or the hold back on there. So step four is to open up the club face and then regrip it. Step number five is we have to open our stance. If we open up the club face, which is what we need to do to land this ball high and soft, and we stand, stand square in our setup, you can see the ball is gonna go shooting out to the right. So what we do is we open up our stance until that club is open and pointing down our target line. So we gotta open up our stance. In other words, you can see, let me get this magnet behind me here. You can see my hips will be pointing out to the left in order to, to get this shot going on target. Step number six is to clean your grooves. You got to make sure that these grooves on this highest lofted club in your bag are good and clean for this shot to increase your stopping power when this ball lands on the green. So take a uh, T, clean those uh, grooves out, get you one of these nice brushes that you can leave attached to your bag. Make sure those grooves are good and clean to increase your stopping power in step number six. Step number seven is to take practice swings. This is a feel shot. We've got to estimate how hard to hit this shot. And along those lines, we've got to get a feel for the back swing length. In a flop shot, there's a lot of speed, a lot of wrist action, and a lot of chances for something to go a little haywire on you. In an open face uh, pitch shot like we're doing, we're not gonna do anything with our wrist. We're gonna take that part out of the equation, have uh, one less moving part in this shot to increase our consistency on flying the ball high, landing it soft, and releasing to the hole. So what we're gonna do is have our weight a little forward, 60% on your lead foot, 40% back here. That's gonna help you to hit down on this ball a little bit. We gotta hit down on it. We gotta take a little bit of a divot after the ball. So, weights forward and take some practice swings here in step seven. As we take these practice swings, we're just gonna rotate back and through and extend our hands to the target. We gotta keep our hands going to the target. Stay down here for a little while. Do not try to help the ball up. That's how we end up with the ball in the bunker, or that's how we end up with the ball flying past the pin. We've got to rotate back and through and keep those hands going towards the target. Again, rotate back and through. As we do that, we get a feel. Do I need to go back here, back here, or do I need to go way back here in order to hit this shot? And that's where practice comes in. You know, get out and practice these kinds of shots because we see them on a golf course. But step number seven is to take two to three practice swings and get a feel for this shot. Our final step in hitting this open face pitch shot, step number eight is to commit and execute. Now that we have done all these things, we have a great game plan. And now that we felt what this shot's supposed to do in step seven, this bunker doesn't exist anymore because we're gonna carry that no problem. We need to focus on the shot in hand. And now it's time to execute. So let's just do that. Commit and execute. Now that ball landed on the back fringe, but that's a great shot in this scenario. My next shot, is gonna be my putter. You know, it's not, a, it's not a bunker shot. It's not me having to pitch way beyond the green or hitting it, you know, somewhere long where uh, I'm in a lot of trouble. And that's where uh, having a good plan in a shot like this in these short game tips will go a long way in understanding the physics on what we need to do. We needed to fly the ball high and land it soft. And we have done all those steps in order to do that. And then we just gotta, get up there as we as we make it all the way to step number eight we just got to be committed and we just got to execute and that's what uh, uh this uh video is all about we got to have a good plan and then we got to commit and execute now we're up here by the green where my ball ended up and it was a really great shot 
those eight steps that we talked about allowed me to execute this where I've got a chance, just like in the opening, to putt this once, you know, to get up and down, to keep my scores low. It's very important to note that I met my goal. My next shot was to use my putter. I'm gonna be able to get my putter on this, even though it's on the fringe. Mission accomplished. I committed, I executed. And that's what we gotta do is have a good plan when we have shots like this and execute them. Now, the only way to get better at those is to practice. I obviously took time and practiced this shot for all of you, and that's how I've increased my chances of executing it rather well. Uh, but we gotta get out and practice. Practice those steps. Uh, hopefully this video has helped you, gain you more confidence when you have a pitch shot over a bunker. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. Remember to smile often, have fun. God loves you. We'll see you next time.